Alright guys, how are we doing today? My name is Charles. I'm one of the acquisition specialists here at Infinity Cash Offer. Today we're going to be going over what I would believe is one of the most important topics that you should learn in real estate, which is building rapport. Okay, building rapport is so critical in any line of work, whether you're a real estate agent, whether you're an investor, attorney, anything. You need to have a relationship with your clients, okay? That relationship needs to be needs to be solid you need to be able to trust who you're working with after all you're handling tens of thousands even hundreds of thousands of dollars in these transactions okay so it's not anything light that we're dealing with all right especially if you want to be in this business long term you're going to have to build rapport rapport gives you more clients later on down the road people say hey charles over here at ico gave me some great service he, he, he gave me a gift afterwards. He, he really cared about what I was saying and he really helped me through my situation. Didn't just care about the house. That's going to precede you. Okay, that's going to go way further than you'd ever. People call me all the time saying, hey, Charles, I've just heard you sell houses. I don't even know who this person is, but we're friends on Facebook. Happens all the time. I'm sure these other guys have similar stories. But like I said, arguably, it's one of the most important topics in real estate that you're going to have to learn. It's just really, really powerful. It's a tool that you're going to need no matter what you do. A lot that what goes into report is just listening. Really, it's it, 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 it's, it's so critical to just listen to see what they have to say. Just by asking open-ended questions and listening and being genuinely curious and, and, and just being really, really genuine about the questions that you're asking and really caring about what they have to say can take you so far. You can get a lot of what you need just by asking open-ended questions and letting them talk. They can tell you their motivation. They can tell you without you having to ask 15 questions. Oh, why are you selling? <laughs> you know, the condition about your house. You ask one or two of the right questions and they'll just talk away. All right, people love to hear themselves talk. As much as it, 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 you want to interrupt them and, and impose what you're trying to, don't, okay, don't. What they have to say is way more important to getting this deal across the finish line than anything that you're gonna have to say. Okay, that's why I believe building rapport is one of the most critical things that you can do in any transaction. Of course, handling objections and, and, and all those other things are, are vital too when you get down to the nitty gritty. But in order to get to that point, you need to have a baseline of rapport. It's absolutely critical. That's just why I feel like building rapport is, 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 is so fundamental to, to this business. You can't have, you can't have, you just can't make it long term in this business without it because people, like I said, it precedes you. People are going to know, hey, Charles just cares about the house. Don't go with him. People are willing to take a lesser price for their property just because they like you more. Okay, it's insane. I've seen people take ten, fifteen thousand dollars when they had somebody asking, you know, was offering twenty thousand dollars. I've seen them go like down ten, fifteen thousand dollars, just because they like me more. <laughs> it's crazy. They, we we compete with other companies. Real estate is super competitive uh, amongst other markets as well. Real estate is super competitive. Rapport is how you stand out from the other investors. It's not always about the money for these people. It's about the service that you can provide them. It's about the way you make them feel. It's about the, the, the relationship that you establish. It's just a personal opinion. I think rapport is the most important thing that you can do whenever you're talking with anybody. It, it, it's, it's almost as important as the numbers. It's almost as important as everything else. Not quite, but it's up there. It's really critical to getting a deal across the finish line, especially in our line of work. Alrighty, well, my name is Jose. I do the acquisitions here with a fellow, a couple of my partners here as well. Uh, I I really like to major in uh, SMS, but right now we're not doing that. But uh, I can show you a couple ways how to handle this one si uh, situation that we always find ourselves in, which is um, I don't want to my house. I don't want to sell my house. So the main word in there is don't. Don't. And whenever, so basically don't is do not. Which is a contraction of two words. That's what it means whenever you combine two words. Contraction. So contraction. So if you look closely at contraction, what is one word that you can see in there? Contract? Contract. Let's go. <laughs> Boom. And what does a contract lead you to? Money. Easy as that. That's one way to look at it. So don't let this stop you at all. A sec, I'm going to erase this real quick. So that's basically one way to look at it as well. But. I'm going to divide this into three 
separate ways you can tackle this. The first one is uh, just call them. Just call them. You know, you can tackle it as a cold call. It's not going to hurt you. If they say yes, if they say yes, it'll lead to either a contract or a follow up. Simple as that. That's one way to do it. The next one is going to be well, are you in your dream home? So, might be able to push some little motivation out from that. If they are, then good, good for them. At least you know that it's the right person that you're contacting. Uh, you have the right number for that specific address just in case they want to sell later. And then if, well, if they're not, you can always push that to say, well, let me help you put your foot in the door for your dream home. And then you follow up with them. That's one way to tackle it as well. And then the third one is, oh, crap, I'm gonna check it real quick. Well, the, yes, the third one is, have you ever thought about selling? And then if they say no, well, then you ask the simple, why not? That's one way to tackle the objection. And then if they say yes, then just mention your company benefits, which is whatever your company, you know, officially benefits for you or for them. Benefits. So what we do here at Infinity Cash Offer is we cover title costs, we cover moving expenses, we we do all of that. So these are three separate ways that you can tackle, I don't want to sell my house. So this right here is pasture, okay? okay. And so for my people that are watching this, whether you're on uh, IG or you're on fucking YouTube, this is the formula that you want to use whenever you are getting into the flow of a sales call, okay? So pasture stands for number one, is problem. Problem is identifying exactly what the situation is, okay? Whenever we're calling a motivated seller, what are we doing? We're identifying a problem, correct? The next thing, guys, is amplification of that problem. This is when you put the problem on the table. And once it's on the table, now it's time for you to be able to, to, to amplify it, to make it more real to dance around the fire a little bit without fully burning yourself. Right. You see what I'm saying? That's the amplification. S stands for service. This is what we do. This is the service that we provide. This is what separates us. It's service plus solution. And that's the next thing. This is what we've done for other clients in the past. This is the solution that we provide. And this is the story for how it benefited that person. You see that? Right. Now the, 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 the story can then transfer into the next part, which is what? This right here is transition and transformation. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you how this thing changed my life or how what I've given to you has changed someone else's life. Okay. You see what I'm saying? And you can transition from all of these things. Now the next one is when you separate yourself from the problem and you recreate it into an object. This is when merit negotiation comes in hand. Merit negotiation is what? Guys, you guys here. 
Right. You put someone right next to you and you look at it. We tackle the problem together. We look at the problem from a third party perspective. We take the seller and we move them over here. I put my arm around the seller and then we address this thing together. What is the object at hand? What is the situation that we're looking at? Right? Mm -hmm. Those are all things that we want to get to. At this point, I'm separating myself from the situation. And then R stands for resolution. Resolution is the close and climax of the conversation. Okay. When you get here, this is when you should either get a contract signed, an appointment executed, or massive rapport. The resolution's everything. People use this formula when it comes to sales in literally everything, even in ads. You want me to show you guys? Check this out. I'm gonna identify a problem real quick and then I'm gonna flow through this real fast. Let's do it. Are you stuck calling multiple motivated sellers and not getting a contract? Believe me guys, I used to call them line for line. And I know how it is to have a phone. Right now I'm amplifying the problem, problem on the table. I know what it's like to have a bunch of leads and one phone and calling them over and over and over again. You know, back in the day guys, let me tell y'all what, there was a platform that, that was around that we didn't know about. So I'm here to tell you guys about well, what's available today. With call tools, guys, we're able to make over 400 calls in one single day to be able to talk to multiple, multiple motivated sellers without having to pull out our phone and use it. And let me tell you guys how it transformed my life. When I started using call tools, I was able to lock in three to five deals and we were able to close on them, netting my company over $50,000. So guys, if you're watching this and you're thinking about using call tools, if you click the link below, resolution, if you click the link below, you can get it for seven days free. You go ahead and give it a try. Let me know what you guys think. It absolutely changed my life and I know it'll change yours. I'll talk to y'all soon. You That's see that? Good. That's good. Talk that right there is pasture. All I did was I identified a problem and a situation. I amplified that problem to the person. I offered a service, a solution, as well as my story of how it affected me. I transitioned into how it transformed my life. I recreated it, made it into an object that was attainable, that we can all get to the same end goal together, and the resolution was me telling them to click the link below in the comment section. This, my friends, is Pasture, and this is a sales process for all of you guys that are watching that are trying to get more deals on contract. If you follow this simple formula, I guarantee it, you will get a deal. So, I'm going to pass the mic back to my homies. I'll see you guys here in a little bit. What's up, guys? My name is Lewis with Infinity Cash Offer. I'm here to talk about objections. Uh, main one is just uh, I'm not ready or I don't want to sell right now uh, If you listen to that again, I don't want to sell right now. The main words are right now And it's okay to ask why you got to ask them. You got to find out why they don't they don't want to sell um, You know, mr. And mrs. Sutter what's going on? You know, why don't you want to sell right now? What's stopping you from selling? You know one of two things is gonna happen either they're gonna say no, I don't want to sell. It's my house. I'm going to die here. Leave me alone. Whatever. They're, they're just going to shut you down regardless. Two, they're going to tell you what's going on. Um, I have a tenant who doesn't want to move out or my sister's living there or whatever the case is. That is no longer an objection. That is a situation. And at that point, you got to build on that. You find out why they don't want to sell and you got to build the rapport. You got to go in and ask them questions like, well, you know, how long have your sister been living there? Is she paying rent? You got to kind of dig into it, build the rapport, find out the motivation, find the pain points and dig into that. Once you find the motivation, once you find the pain points, at that point, you just, um, shit, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, Cut. <laughs> yeah. All right. You're good, man. That was great. That was great. All right. Once you find the pain points, at that point, it's not about them. As Q cited earlier, you want to build the merit negotiation. You get them, you put them next to you, and you both look at the situation and tackle it together. What can we do to settle this situation? What can we do to help you sell this house? Get your sister out who's not paying rent. Get the tenants out who are just squatting at this point. You got to build that relationship by building the rapport. Get them out of the house or whatever it is that you need to do to help them get past that situation. And then from there, you, gotta, you have to get them to commit to it. That's where when you build a rapport, at that point, they're committed to you and you're committed to them. Then at that point, once you get the commitment from them, you tackle it together. 
Because if you, if you don't get a commitment from them, they're just going to drag it on. That's the whole reason why they're in this situation. If they wanted to sell their house and they have a reason to sell their house, but they just don't, they're just going to continue to procrastinate. And if they continue to procrastinate, you're just going to drag this deal on and on and on, and you're never going to get to the closing table. Work the deal with them, for them, and then take it to the closing table. Make sure you get them to commit to talking to the sister. Set up the days that you're going to call them back. Let them know like, hey, I need you to talk to your sister, you know, and then at that point, set the day that you're going to call them back. Call them back and let them know like, hey, did you talk to your sister? Did you, you know, find out why they haven't wanted to move out? What's going on? And then continue on from there to go to the next step and continue to build that rapport, continue to commit so that they can continue to commit. And then you take it to the closing table. <laughs> <laughs> What's up guys, this is Josh. I'm with the uh, Infinity Cash Offer on the acquisition team. I'm here to tell you the do's and don'ts of when you're on appointments. So first, God first. Do, don't. All right, first, be prepared. Do some research. You don't want to go in there blind. You don't want to go in there not knowing anything. Do some research on Propelio, PropStream. Uh, find some comps in the area. Do some ARV research. Know, uh, know what you need to be at. You don't want to be too low. You don't want to be too high. So if I were you, I would find a, a low comp and a high comp just so you have some room to play with and you know where you need to be around. So you know, do, a, do yourself a favor and look, look into the neighborhood and what you need to look at. So with that, um, you know, with that, you did your research, but don't reveal your hand. Don't reveal your hand. Yes, you've done the research, but you don't want to just spill everything that you know right away. Uh, you want to have them kind of let you know about the house, about what things need to get done around the house. Um, so, you know, just be patient and let them kind of tell you what's going on with, with, with the property. And so next, um, just be human. When you're human, you show them that you're not just a robot, you're not just trying to cut them low and, and you know, kind of just trying to jip them. Nah, you know, tell them, hey, I love the neighborhood. I went to a restaurant right here down the road. I went on a date the other night over here that, it's just an awesome time. So you already created memories in the neighborhood. You love the neighborhood. Even if it's a kind of a low neighborhood, hey, I mean, there's potential in everything and you can always build a good dream home there for yourself. So with that, don't be too professional and don't be too business. Don't be too. Here in our company, we try to keep a good line of, uh, of business and rapport. So, you know, pretty much keep a line, business, rapport. It's good to go across like that. You don't want to be too, too business to where, again, you're not trying to just jip them. You don't want to be too rapport to where, hey, I'm your best friend. Yes, you want to be friends. Yes, you want to build a great rapport. But at the end of the day, we are here to do business. We are here to try to get a good price for myself. A good price for you that you're looking for so try to be right in between those two right there next explain how you can help benefits explain the benefits so you want to show them your uh, there's three things that could really make or break a deal it's either the price they don't trust you and the services that you provide. So if they trust you and they love the services that you provide, they could kind of go up, they could go any way with the price. They can, like my friend Charles said, they can give you the deal even if they have a better offer just based off of if they really like you. So show your personality, show them who you are, you know, kind of just be yourself. Uh, tell them that, you know, tell them what your company does. You pay all the closing costs, you pay cash. That's a big thing right there. People want to pay cash because, you know, sometimes there are some situations that are just situations. So they need some help out of some things. So um, present your benefits and what you can do for them. Next, 
Don't talk more than they do. When you walk in the property, let them tell you what's going on. Let them tell you the issues, every crack, every creak in the floor. Let them tell you what's going on because they're the one that's been living there. They know what's going on. Um, take notes if you can. Take a pad. Take mental notes because there are certain things that will drop the price like crazy. There's five points that you should watch out for. One is foundation. Two, roof. Three, electrical. Electrical. Four, plumbing. And five, what is it? Foundation, roof, electrical, plumbing, and HVAC, AC. AC could cost up to five to ten thousand dollars along with everything else here that could drop the price five thousand for each one So when you're walking the house, let them talk Let them tell you what's going on if there's a wet spot in the ceiling. That's a roof issue. Hey, has that gotten fixed recently? When was recently? Uh, the foundation was done. I see cracks in the wall Ask these questions when they're talking to you about when you're walking the property So keep your ears open keep your eyes open take pictures while you're walking the property and try to take in as much information as you possibly can. Next, be transparent. Let them know that you are an investor. Let them know that you are trying to make something out of this. You're not trying to get rich, you're not trying to win the lottery, but you do need to feed your family. You are trying to make a living here. So tell them, hey, I did prepare myself. If you can, take a print of the comps that you did just so you can say, hey, look, this is what I could get this for with this price. And this is what your property looks like. So for the same price, I could get something way better. Hate to say it, but the facts are the facts. You can't lie about that. So it comes down to it. Present them with the facts that you have, what the market is like, what the neighborhood is looking like, and what their property is like. So go prepare. Don't be the first to present the offer. You want to ask them, hey, what are you really thinking about getting out of this property? You know what I know now that I've presented you with the information that I've done, uh, that I've researched on. So I know what I could get for this price. What are you looking for? What, how, what do you need out of this, uh, this agreement? Because they could give you a price that is super high or if you were to give the price first, you know, it's, it's based off of something that they that they're just trying to come up off of. Um, but yeah, you know, do some good, uh, do the research and that'll help you with where you need to be. That's why I say be good with the comps. So don't be the first to present the offer. And if they give you a price that is ridiculous, given the fact that you've done the research and you know what is the property is worth, take some time and be like, hey, look, I need to speak with my partner. This is also, uh, I have somebody that is also riding on this. We invest in these properties together. So I can't just make that like that. So let me talk to him, present these pictures, present the information, let him know what I know at this point, and I can give you a call. So uh, you don't always have to present the offer and that, at that moment in the, in the appointment. So be patient. Sometimes these deals take months to go. They sometimes are tedious, sometimes they're easy. I had a deal that went very smooth within the first appointment. I have a deal that's going to probably be three months down the line. So be patient, just be persistent, follow up. That report is where that comes in. It will help you build the relationship and let them trust you. And at that point, you can possibly get a better deal just based off of them trusting you. So be patient and um, good luck and God bless, guys. Y'all take it easy. I want the check. Check. Ooh, no. I want the check.